When working with sound effects for video games, it's often needed to make a sound loop seamlessly so that it can play on repeat and feel like a continuous sound even though it's actually a short part that's just repeating over and over. In this video I'm going to show you how to seamlessly loop sound effects and I'm going to do this using two popular open source audio production programs. Let's go! Hey, I'm Anfa. In this video we're going to loop sound effects seamlessly using Audacity and Ardor. Audacity is a free and open source audio editor, while Ardor is a free and open source DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation. They are very different, but you can achieve very similar results using both of them. And since I use both, I would like to show you how you can achieve the same results with both, and you can also decide which one is better for what purpose. All right, I've prepared seven example sounds, which are going to be very easy, slightly harder, harder, and then quite difficult to loop properly. And we're gonna loop them all, and I'm gonna show you how that is done. I've prepared seven audio files that we're going to loop seamlessly, first using Audacity, then using Ardor, so you'll be able to compare how the two programs stack up and which one does the job better. All right, so here's my seven files. I'm going to drag in the first one and we'll have a listen. All right, it goes and goes like that. Okay, in order to loop this sound, everything we really need to do is just trim this sound so that the start and the end of our loop are in a quiet part where there's only background noise present. So this is one, this is really the easiest case uh, imaginable. So I'm going to just maybe first zoom in a little bit so we can see more of the waveform. And you can see in here we have quiet, a quiet part. I'm going to play it. Yeah, there's only noise here. And let's see what's here. Also only noise in here. So I'm going to select this part here. And now an important thing is to press the Z key. What Z does, I'm going to zoom in and show you. What Z does is it's going to snap the edges of our selection to the closest zero crossing. So let me move this to a random place. And now if I hit Z, you see it's going to, it's Audacity has moved this edge of the selection back so that it's in a place where both channels hopefully both, sometimes it's just one, are as close to zero as possible. This is important because if we would cut our sound in here or here, you can see that we would cut on a non-zero sample value and that would create an audible click. In some cases, this is not problematic, but I think in this sound it could be audible. So let's hit Z. Again, make sure our selection is on the zero crossing. And now all we really need to do is hit Control T or trim. I'm going to reset the zoom. And now what we can do is press Control C, right arrow and Control V to copy and paste this region uh, face to head to tail. And now we can just play through this um, repeat point and see if we can hear that it's there. Alrighty, and that's a seamless loop. So that's done. Let's double click, delete our copy. And now uh, I'm just going to save file, export selected audio. 
and let's call this 01. I'm going to save in 24-bit flag. Okay, so that's the first exercise done. I'm going to close this and move on to the second one. Let's have a listen. This is the inside of my fridge. All right, so what we want to do is have a nice loop of this fridge ambience from the inside. I'm going to also zoom in to see it a bit better. And now, we need to find two spots where the sound is identical. I think this is pretty close. Let's create a range selection and then if I click on the ruler... Alright, we could make the loop longer. Alright, I think even here it's... Still good. All right, uh, let's hit Z again to make sure our selection is on the zero crossings. And you can he see that in here, Audacity didn't manage to find a completely perfect place. And we can try and nudge this. Oh, here could be a better one. Hit Z again, and this is going to be better. So it's a good idea to investigate your start and end point, or in and out point. And again, the same here. Audacity found a zero crossing, but only on one channel. And we need to have both left and right channels to be on zero. Oh, I have... Oh, whoa, uh, I've lost my selection. Control shift z uh, Yeah, all right, I need to select it again. Unfortunately, undo... Yeah, I don't think there is an undo for selection. <coughs> Whew. Oh, I should have recorded that. All right, I'm going to move this a little bit here. Okay, hit C again. I'm going to zoom in and seek for a zero crossing. This seems nice. Let's check out the other, the out point, and this ain't so good. I am going to try and find a better one, so click and drag, hit Z again. Oh. Oh, that's not a zero crossing, excuse me. How the, how does it say that's a zero crossing? Okay, I think, I think this is pretty much perfect. Right. So again, let's trim this, Control T. Now, Control C, right arrow to move our cursor to the right of the selection, Control V to paste again. We can, of course, repeat this. So we have three copies, but there's no need. And let's play and see if this actually loops. All right, there is a slight difference in timber of the fridge tone, but I think it's it's so small that we could say that it's um You know what? Yeah. Uh let's call that a day. And you can also see that this is a pretty quiet sound, but we'll leave it like that. I'm not going to normalize it. That's like a different thing. Let's export the second loop. And there it is. Nice. Now let's import another file. And this one is going to be more difficult. 
Uh, as I said, we're ramping up difficulty with each example. So let's have a listen. Oh, this one is going to be loud compared to the others. Uh... Okay, so this is a vocal tone, a note, sang note. So far, we've been dealing with noises. There wasn't any cycles, any repetition, any like patterns we need to match. We just had to find places where it, where the start and the end of the loop sounded identical. Here, we also need to maintain the sequence of the oscillation. So you can see we have a one cycle here, another cycle here. So we will need to cut on these cycles. And of course, we need to find the parts where the voice sounds identical so that the start and the end transition doesn't sound jarring. Uh, 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 uh. Let's try this. What you can do to quickly try out a few things is to just copy a part. However, we will lose our precious, precious selection. So what you can also do is create a label track and that label track is going to let us save our selection. I'm going to call this one. Uh, one. And enter. And now we can just hit this and we'll have this part selected. Let's unselect this with control, copy, paste, paste, and we'll, like this is a very rough loop, but we'll just see if the end and start sound similar. Uh, uh, okay, this part sounds more nasal. Uh, Maybe we need to delete something from the front. Let's try again. So I've just shortened my first loop and I'm testing it again. Uh, All right, again, uh, nasally. I'm gonna shorten this. Oh, wait, wait, did, did I cut it right? Oh, I did not. You see, I missed some parts, so that would be bad. Whoa, 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 okay. If you click on the line between two regions, like I did, you're going to merge them into a single region. I don't like that. For here, I want them to be separate. Uh, All right, it's exactly, it looks like it's still not. Uh, Let's try this. Uh, we may need to make a very short loop. Uh, because, uh, believe it or not, it's really difficult to sing a note like a synthesizer, that is, with no variation. Uh, uh, oh. Okay, I think this will work. So I have this little loop I've taken. I'm going to now delete this part so that we start on the rising oscillation and go to the end and delete everything up to this sample here so we end right before that cycle. So now if I copy and paste, let's zoom in, and this looks like it's a perfect expansion, extension of extrapolation of that. Let's see. Uh, All right, that's pretty cool, pretty quick. So I'm going to just select this, paste it a couple times and we can listen. Uh, All right, I would say this loops. And that's our loop. So I'm going to undo copying and pasting this. Oh, and might this sound quieter? So I'm going to reset this to zero before exporting because if I will, if I leave this fader at a negative, at a different value than zero, the exported file will have altered volume. You may notice that this was a mono file, by the way. We didn't have to deal with two uh, channels, just one which sometimes is easier, sometimes it doesn't matter that much. Okay, let's go with example number four. And example four is going to be a little bit like example two.
what I want to do is have a loop of this water stream coming from the sink. But you may notice that it sounds different at every part. So there is no way we're going to be able to just trim our way out of this. And this is where we need to introduce a new technique. And that is a crossfade. So what I'm going to do is select the part which I want to make a loop out of. I'm going to hit Z again to make our cuts hopefully on the zero crossings. I'm going to trim this file. So I'm going to hit Control T. And now um, we want this edge to be seamlessly transitioning to this edge, or rather this edge to be transitioning smooth, seamlessly to this edge. So uh, we're going to make a crossfade, but how do we do it? We need to somehow overlay this on top of this. So how do we do it is we decide how long our crossfade is, then we're going to cut a part of our sound. I have hit Control i which is inserting a split. We are now these are two regions, separate regions. We can move them. And now you can see this edge and this edge transition into each other seamlessly. So I can swap these around. And now this edge and this edge will transition seamlessly, which will loop perfectly. And we need to just transition somehow from this edge to this edge so that this is not sounding jarring. And how will I do it is I'm going to move this into a new track. I'm going to hit Control D because that's kind of the easiest way to do it. Now delete this. And as a free bonus, we also got these two overlaid. So our original track is here overlapping on our uh, part which we're going to crossfade. And now, um, because Audacity is totally destructive, every time you do something wrong and you need to correct it, you just have to undo a bunch of times or keep copies of your tracks so you can um, just uh, pick your raw material again and, and work on that. Um, that's why sometimes creating these cross phases is going to require some trial and error. And I know from experience that they don't they don't work how would you expect. If we just create a crossfade like make this fade out, then control select this, control deselect our track, and go effect fade in, this ain't gonna work. And I'm gonna just show you why. It sounds seamless, almost, but have you noticed the volume dip? Let me show this again. Watch closely the output levels as we go, and especially on, this, on the middle of the crossfade. We are losing volume in here. And there's a couple of ways we can correct that. One way is to use the volume uh, envelope tool. You can just click, click again and like create a little bump in here and try and make this work. All right, that's better. I just need to make another bump in here. So if I click on these outer, it's going to snap to zero, which is like neutral. And if I click on this inner part, I can move it up and apply gain. So make it louder. Actually, maybe I should have done this. Oh, or maybe, maybe not. Let's, let's see. Like, let's try it. Okay, this is good. I like that. What I'm going to do next is reset these levels to zero and zero. And now to combine these two tracks into a single one, I'm going to select this control, oh, control shift, sh uh. I'm just gonna click and drag. All right, now go tracks, mix, mix and render to new track. 
which have created a new track containing a sum of our two tracks below before. Let's solo it. And you can see that this volume is very consistent throughout this track, except for this part. So we can actually use our volume and envelope tool again to try and correct that a little bit. Just we need to be careful because if we mess up our like on the edges of our loop, we're going to have a problem. The good thing about the volume envelope tool is that it's it's non-destructive. It's like the the only non-destructive tool in Audacity. And it shows you the waveform immediately, which is really helpful because you can actually judge what you're doing visually. Let's try it. Okay, that's good enough. Let's now test if it loops seamlessly. I'm gonna copy and paste this. And as you can see, our volume envelope is also being copied and pasted as well. Let's play through the loop transition and make sure we can't hear it. Okay, I had no idea where this transition happened. So, job well done. So, let me delete all that because that's how Audacity rolls. It's destructive. And let's load up example number five. Let's have a listen. Okay, this is a city ambience, and I'd like to create a long loop out of that. However, there are some problems with wind noise. Let me zoom in. You can see these low frequency bumps. This is wind doing us a disservice. We could high pass this to, uh, to get rid of it. But I don't want to do this, this is not the topic of the video, so I'm just going to do a cut in and here. Yep, let's go Control i and uh, yep, let's delete this, and this is what we're left with. Also, what's this? I think this is part of the recording, though I don't like this bump. I'm gonna just select this, hit Z to make my selection borders snap to zero crossings, delete. Check this out, it looks good, let's play. Sounds better. Nice, let's loop this. Same deal as before. We need to select how long we want our crossfade to be because there's no way we're gonna match the start and end of this. There's too much components, like there's birds, there's cars, there's dogs, there's some, some people throwing out bottles too much things going on. We won't be able to match this. We need to make a crossfade, so, and maybe even a quite long one. So I'm gonna hit Control i in here to separate this part. I'm gonna Control d Now delete that. So remember this edge and this edge are matching perfectly. I'm gonna move this forward, move this back, or maybe do it like that. And now, this is start of our loop. By the way, did I did I snap to zero crossing before cutting? I think I did. If not, we can correct it a little bit. Yeah, I did. Uh, and we do a crossfade. So, um, yeah, just... Uh, we can kind of cheat and try and make it work easier without using the envelope tool to fix it afterwards. So I'm going to do fade out on this part then control select my first track, deselect this one, and I'm gonna change the selection. And I'm gonna go fade in. 
And hopefully this overlap that we are fading in here, but fading out here, is going to give us more um, consistent volume across the fade. Let's listen. Yep, that's really good. I I have no idea. I have no idea these are two different files uh, or two different parts of the recording. Okay, so let's... sorry. How do I... I think there are some tools for zooming, but I never can figure out which one I need to use. Let's go. Tracks, mix, mix and render to new track. And here is our loop. I'm going to solo it, copy. Right arrow, paste, right arrow, paste. I'm just going to play it. Let's see if we can hear a transition. Maybe a shorter one, because this is already quite long. I'm also going to zoom in so we can see the waveforms a little better. Because it's quite, quite, uh, quite quiet. Perfect. No sign of looping whatsoever. This is this is seamless. Just like it should be perfectly seamless. All right, let's uh, export the selection. This is loop 05 and let's load example 6. And this one is going to be a difficult one and we're going to learn some new techniques to do it. Let's uh, let me turn it down cuz it's a quite a loud sound. Let's play it. Okay, you can see there is some kind of a repeating pattern in here. So we need to identify this pattern and cut out at least one copy of this pattern. Pattern, And unfortunately, the waveform doesn't tell us that much because there is this uh, underlying bass tone which is quite overpowering. And when I look at this waveform, I don't see anything really. So, let's switch the view from waveform to spectrogram. And now you can clearly see what is going on in here. We have four repetitions of a loop, two of which are incomplete and two of which are complete. And what we can do is find a common point, maybe between this and this, just transition from this to this, and this is our, our loop. So I'm going to... Huh. But you see, this isn't that simple. Because how, how do we make sure that we are absolutely on on um, on point with, with our trimming? Um, uh, to do this, I'm going to duplicate this track. Switch it to spectrogram as well, because for some reason duplicates don't do this. And I'm going to shift this. Maybe I'm going to even mute it. I'm going to shift this track so that we can match these features that we see on the spectrogram. Here we have some higher frequency content coming in. And this looks like we are syncing it nicely. All right. Okay, so now uh, what we can do is we can find a common point. Actually, you know what? We should shift this one, one iteration here. Yep. Because we wanted to cut it on this thing. All right. Okay, so let's do this. Now I'm going to switch it to waveform view. 
uh, because it's going to be pretty important to match these waveforms of the base tone, otherwise we're going to have some phasing issues. Uh, so I'll try and see where it, what the pattern is. I'm trying to match these. This is the, there's a peak like that. Oh, oh, that's better. Is that a better match? Okay, I can put a selection in here. Maybe I can, hmm. It's quite difficult. And also it doesn't seem to like repeat very well. <laughs> Maybe this is not what I should be doing. Oh, that's probably it. Yeah, that looks more like it. Yeah, it seems matching much better. Okay, uh, let me switch it again to spectrogram just to see. Okay, so what we want to achieve is copy, is trim from this part to this part. So I'm going to now select a common place somewhere where the, the tone, there's not much movement, so it's going to be easier uh, among all both tracks. So I've put my cursor here. I'm going to control click on my upper track and I'm going to just go control I, which inserts a cut. Now, the thing is, I need to transfer this cut to the same position in this cycle of the loop. And that's why I moved this in here, because I can just select that. Shift this back to the start so that it snaps perfectly. You can see that this, the endpoints are exactly in the same place. And now we just know where this is. So I can click and Audacity will snap to this. I can just hit Control i again, and this part is going to be our perfect loop. Ha! Let's switch to waveform view before we do that. I'm going to delete this helper track already because it's done its job. And let's see and try to find a zero crossing because you can see there is no zero crossing on this part. Uh, I either forgot or, yeah, I think I forgot to do that. But let's find a closest zero crossing. You know what? We don't have to do is like that. <laughs> we can trim it right now. Let's go trim, control T. And now I'm going to go to the end because I saw that somewhere before is a nice zero crossing. Maybe it's going to be this here. No. Maybe this. Nah. All we need to do is find a nice zero crossing. It doesn't really matter where it is. It could be in the middle of that sound file. Wherever it is, just find a nice zero crossing. All right. Mm, could be better. Mm. Yeah, it's difficult because the bass tone is quite out of phase of everything. Um, Okay, you know what? I think we might not find the greatest... Okay, I think this is going to be pretty good. Right, what we're going to do now is slice it here, and I'm just going to cut this part and paste it in here. Now let's just shift these two together. <laughs> oh wait, they don't match. Ah, because we need to make a, a crossfade. <laughs> a simple cut won't make it. You see, our waveforms don't really match that closely. <laughs> we won't be able to get away with just a simple trim. Let's just test this. I'm gonna copy paste and listen. Yep, okay, undo. Let's undo our way back to the start. All right. So now you see this isn't as simple as we thought, right? And I told you this is going to be a major, uh, major challenge. But you see what we have here, we have a nice overlap of two parts. Let's delete this one. So what do you think? We could, since this and this part 
are going to transition seamlessly. We can just fade this out and fade this in, and we have our nice crossfade, and it's done. Let's do it. Fade out, control, control. I'm gonna make this one shorter, actually. Or even move it a little bit. Okay, effect fade in. Now I'll need to move my selection. Oh, come on. Okay, I had to merge these two regions to be able to change my selection. And now I'm going to select this and go edit, remove special, split, delete. Why split, delete? If I deleted this normally, it would shift all of that to the left, breaking my sync. And the sync is pretty crucial in this thing. Okay, so now we should have a nice crossfade. Let's listen to it. Oh, I just need to unmute this one. It seems to work, but there's a little bit of a volume dip, just like we had before with the fade in, fade out. But let's not worry about it too much. What I'm going to do now is again restore this little cut in here because we're going to need it. So now I'm going to actually duplicate this once again, delete it from here, and move it to the start. Oh, wait, but it doesn't... Ah... Oh. But wait, I'm... No, 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 no. Undo, yeah. And instead of deleting that, I'm gonna control L this. So L means it's going to become silence. I think it's silence audio, yes. All right, I'm gonna, again, insert my trim point. Sorry, my loop point in here. And now I'm just going to move this thing. Yeah, I need to duplicate this to be able to move it to a new track because that's the easier way. Like, all right, and now, oh, I need both of these. That's what I'm doing wrong. I need to copy both of these. I'm gonna, no. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna select all of that. Shift this to the left. And now I want to make sure these two snap. Okay. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So now this part shows me my loop point. Right? So this plus this equals my loop. Uh, let's do this. I'm gonna just copy that, paste it on these two tracks. I am going to tracks mix, mix and render to new tracks. So we have our loop created in here. Uh, I think I've selected something more than I wanted. Let's undo. Let's go. Again, track, mix, mix and render to new track. For some reason, it doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Uh, whatever. We're going to force it to work. Tracks, mix, mix and render. Okay, whatever. I'll need to delete this manually. Uh, let's So let's zoom right in. I'm gonna also use control mouse wheel to zoom in on that and make sure I'm deleting all the, oh, okay. Shift home will move my selection to the start. Let's delete. Oh my goodness, there's so much work in Audacity to just get this going. All right, let's copy, paste and paste and listen to the transition. Okay, except for the nasty click, it is seamless. So that is good. So how do we fix the nasty click? Of course, we find a zero crossing. Or as good an approximation of zero crossing as we can. Oh, by the way, my volume has changed because I've... Um, 
yeah, I, I, um, I forgot to reset my faders before I mixed and rendered. So that's a little bit of a thingy. Okay, no, no biggie. All right, now let's find a zero crossing. And we can hit the Z key to find, try and find it with Audacity's help. And we may not find one. And if we don't, we're gonna make one. So that's not a huge problem. Okay, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna go with this one. Let's copy or cut this. So I'm gonna go Control X. I'm gonna go to the end, Control V and paste. And now you see these should transition perfectly. But I think, oh yeah, that's the problem. I just have one tiny sample, which is zero. I'm gonna merge these regions. Oh, but I can't merge them because that's the whole point. All right, I, I have I have just one sample that is zero. So that's the problem. The problem is that I've been... Okay, now I don't understand, what the hell? Okay, yeah, this is the problem. I delete that. Cool, now we find our zero crossing. Oh yeah, let's, let's go with this. Shift, click here, Control X. So we are almost on the zero crossing here. Select it here, Control V. So we are almost on the zero crossing here. I'm gonna merge this, so. And now, just to make sure, I'm gonna apply a little fade out on the end of this loop and a little tiny fade in on the start of it. Let's copy, right arrow, paste, and listen to the transition. Again, okay, again. I'd say this is okay, this is good. There's some macroscopic click. I don't know where it came from, but it shouldn't be there. All righty. The last thing left to do is correct our bad crossfade. So I'm going to, oh, oh I need to resume reset. Oh, but I'm not gonna see my levels. Uh, let's normalize it then. Okay, we are at back to square one with the levels. I'm going to insert a point here, insert a point here. Now I'm moving it down and up because if I move it up a little bit, it's going to snap to the neutral position. Now I can move this up a little bit, maybe this down. I need to avoid clipping. So I don't want these peaks to go above, to touch the, the edge, all right? And I need to avoid it on both channels. Uh, okay, I think this looks a bit better, more e equal, even. Let's test it again. Okay, here is our loop. <sighs> Whoa, <laughs> let's export it. Uh, maybe just reset this so it, the levels are not intact. And type 06. That is the exercise 06 done. Let's delete all of that. And now the final exercise is 07. And this is gonna be a little bit different, not necessarily more difficult, Maybe a little bit, but a different. I'm gonna turn it down so it doesn't kill you. And now let's listen it to it. Okay, so what we want to achieve is this uh, section looping indefinitely. Just uh, to make it really seamless and not what we heard right now. So let's open up the spectrogram and see what actually going is going on here. And this is pretty clear now. We have these hits and they have a steady rate. So what we need to do is we need to cut in a place where would be a next uh, hit. So we need some way to find where the next hit would be. And we could measure the distance between the two see how long it is, 
shift the selection, try and uh, blah, blah. No, uh, just duplicate this track. And I'm going to actually switch back to waveform because, as you can see, the high frequency content is pretty telling of where the hit takes place. So what I'm going to do is just shift this second track, which is a copy. I am going to put C and align it so that these high frequency transients are aligned. Nice. So now this is the place where we want to create our loop. So I'm going to hit Z. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to hit Z because I, I prefer to do a little fade out uh, instead of breaking the timing. So Control I. And I'm going to delete this. We don't need it anymore. But what we need is another track with this thing. So this transitions seamlessly into this. But we need to overlay this tail on top of our of the start of our loop or otherwise we are not gonna have the reverb really looping around and also we need to delete these empty parts in here I'm gonna just go shift home to delete all of that. I'm going to control select my second track and delete. Okay. As you can see, the tail is so long that it even exceeds the length of the loop. So I'm going to just maybe delete it to this part and fade it out in here. I'm sure this is not going to be a problem. Okay. Let's select all maybe because that's all we have in the project. Copy, paste, right arrow, paste, and let's listen to two cycles of this loop. That's seamless. Great. So let's undo these piece and I'm going to select all of that. Tracks, mix, mix and render to a new track. And I forgot to change my levels, so undo. Double click, zero, double click, zero, and again tracks, mix, mix and render to a new track. Uh huh. Now this loop is very loud, so even though these samples here are not zero, and this isn't zero either, it doesn't matter because you can't hear this anyway. Okay, let's file, export, selected audio, zero, seven. And that's all the files looped in Audacity. All right, it's time to redo all of our looping in Ardor. And I've saved Ardor for last because usually it's much faster to work with. Instead of dealing with these files one by one, I can very easily import them all at once. So that's first improvement in my opinion. And why I can do it is because I will still be able to manage everything. Okay, let me first arrange the files so that they... Actually, you know, we can select them all, right click, select position, and sequence regions. All right, okay, uh, I've broken my sequence, so let's do it like that. Okay, to focus on the first file, I'm going to select it and hit Z, which will zoom it to view. And this is our keyboard typing. All right, so we can hear and see. This is where the silence part is. And I'm just going to cut there using the S key, which cuts on my selection. Also, we are having snap enabled with a musical grid. So I'm going to disable this grid. So snap will still let me cut uh, snapping to something, but not to the grid. And I'm just going to delete these parts. Now find this part, S to split, shift right click also deletes, 
which is very useful. And now I'm going to just hit Alt D to duplicate and we can listen to our loop. Perfect. Uh, okay, so what we could do to export this now is right click, select the name of the region and go export. But I'm going to show you a different way, which is a little bit more complicated, but comes with a huge reward as it's going to save you a lot of time, especially if you're going to be iterating on your files. And it's something I use all the time when producing sound effects because you can very easily export a lot of them at once. So I'm going to use range markers, not CD markers. I'm gonna actually to hide CD markers. Okay, and I'm going to click and hold control, click and drag. I'm gonna make sure this range is actually longer than my region here. So yeah, I'm gonna call this double click and call this zero one. And now I'm gonna hit Alt E to show the export dialog. And this is where you define what to export from Ardor and where and how. Uh, what's interesting to us is the location, which is by default inside of the session, uh, but that's not important right now. What is more important is format. And I'm going to see what we have here and let's select flag 24 bit as our baseline, but I'm gonna hit new. And this is going to be a copy of what you have selected. I'm gonna call this SFX. And I'm going to make it maybe actually, yeah, it could be flag 24 bit. But an important thing is we could normalize it or we could not normalize it. And we want to trim the silence at start and at end. And this will be denoted here as trim. Let's save that. And you can see that SFX format is being used now. What we're going to do now is go to time span. And here you can see multiple time spans. First is session. Session is the default, which is going from the start marker right to the end marker, which is outside of the current view. And 01 is the range marker we've inserted here. So I'm going to select 01 and deselect session. This way we're going to export one file from this range. And because we're using silence trimming, it doesn't matter that our marker is longer than our range. It's going to be trimmed so it's exactly as long as it needs to be. Let's hit export. You see Ardor has created an our export and this is our file. Uh, we also have a nice analysis of the integrated volume, peak levels, true peak levels, uh, our volume, our waveform, our spectrogram, and also LUFS. What I'm going to do now is go to our export folder. Actually, let's do this again. I'm going to hit Alt E. And we'll change the export folder. Let's go browse. Going to move up and go with examples. No, no, no. Yep, Ardor. Okay, and that's the directory. Let's hit export again. And that will produce another file, which is in this directory right there. Now, how can we make sure this is actually looping seamlessly? Well, let's open it up in Audacity. And I know it's like it's a bit silly to like use Audacity to verify that it's seamlessly looping when you export from outer, but this is what I sometimes do. Just to make sure, because Audacity is a pretty dumb program, so I'm sure it's not going to cheat on us and do something smart to try and make it sound like it's slipping seamlessly when it's not. I'm going to make it much larger and I'm going to play it. Perfect. Let's keep Audacity around. We're going to use it later. Okay, let's go back to Ardor. This is our first file. It's looped. Let's go to the next one. And this was our fridge ambience. Ah. Uh. Oh, we have an overlap with a different file. I'm going to just move these forward. Ah. Uh. 
All right, these parts sound identical. I'm just gonna delete that. Shift right click deletes as splits and just hit Alt D and see what happens. Somehow it loops seamlessly. How does it work? Why? In Audacity, when we just did something like that, we had a click and we had to go with the zero crossings. Well, let me show you. If we zoom in a lot, you can see that we actually do have fade-ins and fade-outs. And these are default created by Ardor whenever you split anything. Every region has these on the start and end. They are very, very short, but they are helping so you can deactivate them, and if I do that, um, actually we don't. We weren't going to have a click because luckily I just had found a place where the values are very very similar. There might be a tiniest of clicks. Yes, there was a tiny click in the right channel, as you can hear, as you could have heard. And it was this tiny, you know, you can see that there's a tiny misalignment of these. So if we just activate these default crossfades, what's going to happen is our we're going to fade them to silence very quickly and fade back. And it's a seamless transition. So that's it. This is all we need. Let's control and drag on the range markers ruler. Double click to name this. O2 Alt E to show the export dialog. Now I'm gonna to go to time spans, deselect 01, select 02, hit export, and go to the directory. Okay, here is a nice ambient fridge sound, and here it is. Let's open it up in Audacity just to be sure. Control C, Control V. I'm also going to zoom right in. So we can see the waveform better. Make it a little larger and let's play it. Oh, it's gonna be long. Let's... Perfect. Seems seamless to me. Good. Now, let's do the third file. And this is our vocal. I'm going to turn down the track. Uh... Chicken, select this and hit Z, and that's going to maximize it in my view. All right, so what we can do is just do a split like we did before in Audacity. And just Alt D and see what happens. And you can see that just like with Audacity, we have this nasty uh, timber change. So we can't really do this. If we could synchronize these cycles perfectly, like you see, we have a pretty good sync in here, we could make a crossfade. So, ho, let me see. Maybe we can do that. Yeah, a crossfade is not going to be viable on this thing because of the tone. Now, we could use a, a, a pitch correction plugin to make sure that the frequency is constant throughout, but I've made another video about this, so maybe let's not do that. Let's, let's keep it simple. I think these two should go well. Let's Alt D and just see. Uh... Uh, okay, this should be good. I just need to find a part where we are starting and going through the zero crossing. I'm going to right click and deactivate this little crossfade. And uh, okay, I'm going to disable snap. I kind of wish Ardor would have more precision and I could zoom in a bit farther, but I think we'll, ma we'll manage. Okay, let's deactivate it as well. Let's Alt D and listen. Ah, uh, okay, it doesn't work. There is a small click, but you know what we can do very easily. We can, 
I'm going to use another track. Move this down. Uh -huh. Extend it. Turn on snapping. Split it here. And actually do a crossfade. On a single cycle. Delete this. And let's try this again. I'm going to Alt D. And let's listen to this transition. Uh, and it's seamless. Let me play this again. Uh, and now in slow motion. Awesome. Yep. This is all we need. Now let's control and track on the range markers ruler. Call this 03. We can reset the fader by shift clicking on it. Let's hit Alt E, go to time span, select third time span, export. And now this doesn't seem like it's perfectly looping. We have like a little gap. But if we open the file in Audacity, you can see that there isn't really this problem. And if I copy and paste, you can see we do have a perfect loop. Uh, let's Let's maybe select all right. Control V, Control V. Let's go home. And I'm going to turn down the volume because this is going to be loud. Uh... On a side note, something like that is really cool if you like detect which note it is, it is with a, like a tuner. And you put this into a melodic sampler and you use this for a lead instrument. It's uh, You can pitch it up and it sounds really fun. Like... Uh... funny things. Oh, no, no, no. Let's don't don't do that. Back to Ardor. Uh, you can see that we're doing these quite a lot faster than in Audacity. And yeah, let's hit F. No, 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 not F. Z. Okay. And here is our another loud one. Okay. Let's hit this. And this, delete these, shift, right click, deletes. Uh, select our crossfade length. Now it snaps to beginning, I don't need to snap it. And it also snaps to where the region underneath is. If I move this, you can see that our region underneath is uh, ending exactly where this uh, crossfade snaps to because I have snap enabled. Okay, let's play this. And that's really good. Let's Alt D and see what happens if I go for this transition. And it is perfect. Why it is perfect? Probably because Ardor has applied our little tiny crossfade, but it's so short, it's completely unnoticeable and it kind of removes the need for us to care about zero crossings, which is hard to do sometimes, especially on stereo files, and especially with something like this where there's just noise. Okay, this is it. Range markers. Let's create another one. Call it 04. Alt E. Oh, oh. No, no, cancel. I'm going to shift click on this to reset the fader. Time span 04 export. And yep, it looks like it's perfectly seamless. Just to be sure, let's drop it into Audacity. I've already shown you that Ardor exports it and it is seamless, but let's do it. Oh, and I'm going to turn it down. No seam whatsoever. Let's zoom in and you can see there's this tiny, tiny fade to black, fade to silence and fade from silence. So yeah, we could do this better. Theoretically, we could make a tiny crossfade instead and disable these fades, but it doesn't really make a perceptible difference. No one's gonna notice this. I don't notice this. It's seamless. 
Awesome. Let's go to the sound number five. Uh, hop. Uh, Z. Okay, this is the the street ambience. Yeah, here are our. Here is the wind blowing. I'm just gonna cut here with S, shift to right click to delete. And again, split to detach my loop point, sorry, my uh, loop crossfade part. Just add a crossfade and listen. Yep, that sounds perfectly seamless to me. Let's alt D this and play through this transition just to make sure. Okay, seamless. Uh, we could also delete this tiny thing which we have deleted in Audacity. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Up. It is here, so I'm going to just go S, S, shift right click, and I'm going to move this to here and shorten that region underneath. And because we're doing this, there's always a tiny over, tiny crossfade. Yep, we need to add our crossfade back. Yep, control, right click and, sorry, control, control, click and drag, not right click. Rename this to 05, shift click on the fader to reset, alt E to open the export dialog, select our time span, export. Okay, the last two sounds. This is going to be more difficult uh, because you remember in Audacity we used a spectrograph view to tell where the, the sequence starts and ends, but in Ardor we don't have a spectrograph view right now. It's just not there. But what we can do is help ourselves with some effects. So I'm going to control, middle click and drag down to create a new track. I'm going to add a little filter effect. So plugin selector filter and HCE high low pass filter is what I'm going to use. Yep. And now the problem is we have this overwhelming bass tone. I've, sol I've soloed the track. So if we, oh, it's very loud. Let's isolate this bass tone. Uh, if I remove this, the waveform should tell me much more about what's going on underneath. So let's use this high pass filter. Let's disable the high pass, low pass filter at all. Okay, but you can see it doesn't affect the waveform. This is because Ardor is fully non destructive. All the effects in this effect stack are applied in real time as I'm playing this back, which gives me huge flexibility because I can automate changes like make these faders move as I play the timeline, etc. But in this case, I want to actually see the results. But we can do this. Let's hit R to go to the range mode, click and drag. And because we are using the snap mode, it also snaps to start and end of the region. I'm going to right click now and do consolidate range with processing. Yep. And now you can see we have removed this uh, base tone from our waveform. 
we can see some detail. We can see some patterns emerging. Let me normalize this. Hit Alt and Free to show the normalized dialog. And this is going to be muted. It's just going to help us judge the cuts. Now, uh, if I try to select both at the same time, I can, but there's an easier way to do this. I can create a group just by clicking and dragging. And now if I select one or the other, if they would start and end at the exactly same spot, other would select them both. So I'm going to select them both and hit J to set my in point and then go to the end and press K to set my out point. Now, if I select one, the other is going to be selected as well, which is going to be very useful because I'll be able to split them and rearrange the split parts, judging by this thing, but actually we only need this thing. Let's undo all these things and let's start and actually do our cuts. Okay, so what do we have here? You can see we have a little pattern going up, right up. Same thing going here. We can actually copy these two. Let's press and hold control and drag. This will create a duplicate and we can overlay them. And we can move it and slide it until we have a match. Okay, this seems like it's overlapping pretty well. So we could do a cut here. Hey, yep. Okay. What I'm going to do is insert a sync point by hitting V. And this is going to put a little arrow in all in these files. Now I can actually move and shift them to new tracks. I also want to split these regions in here. So I'm going to hit S. Now they are separate and thankfully this snap mode just snaps to these sync points so it, it's very easy to hit that. Now I can select these two. Actually if I make a group out of that I can select them both again. I can move back and Oh, I wish it would snap to the start of this region. Somehow it doesn't want to do that. Which is strange. Okay. I think it's perfect now. And let's snap to another one. Just snap to this uh, sync point again and hit S. Now this should be our perfect loop. I'm going to copy this, actually, yeah, set my playhead somewhere else, hit paste. Oh, it's in different tracks. Never mind. We can control, sorry, we can middle click and drag it up. And I can now play this. Actually, let's duplicate them so we can hear the transition. And I'm going to turn down uh, the track. I think we got a bit more lucky because this sounds pretty much seamless to me, even though it's not. But Ardor gives us this little fade. However, we can make this better very easily again just by extending this part. And again, Ardor makes things easy for us because if I move my mouse in here, you can see that the blue vertical line is snapping to the edge of the region below and I can just hit S, delete this and... Oh, by the way, I should sync this. You can see we have our little... Yeah, if I hit all L, I'm going to disable snapping for a little while. And I can shift this so that it seems like the two cycles are overlapping yeah, this seems pretty good. Okay, now I just make a crossfade. And let's 
duplicate that and listen to this transition. Okay, that's pretty seamless, but there's a tiny little click. And that click is because the, the, the frequencies in, in here are so low that this act fade actually creates an audible, audible click. There is too much bass in here, and we can't get away with an actual, honest to God, zero crossing. At least not with this kind of thing. So we need to correct for that. What I'm going to do is delete this part and that part as well. And I'm going to find the nearest zero crossing. And I think this is going to be pretty close. So let's split it here. And same like with Audacity, I'm going to cut that part and paste it here to, in the end. The difference is I can't actually glue these together. I mean, I could, but it's much simpler to just select the first one, drag and snap it to the edge. Now I can delete this and we have our extended part. Awesome. Let's Alt D to copy and listen again. Now there should be no clicks because our cut is actually on a zero crossing. And yes, we have tiny little fades, but they should be... Yeah, they should not have any issues right now. Let's play this. And that is perfectly seamless. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> let's move this. I'm gonna hit Alt to just select these this track. If I don't keep, oh, I actually it does work. Yeah, I'm selecting this and I'm gonna hit middle click move it up to the track 06 and I'm gonna mute all of that because if I don't mute these they will be exported as well let's control drag on the range markers ruler type 06 alt e to open the export dialog select 06 as region export and now look at this and you can see there is a little problem this thing is too loud. We are clipping. And that is no good. And I'm going to show you why that is. It's very easy to fix. You see, we are using the default crossfade, which is called constant power. And what it does is, um, most of the time it does a great job, but for this particular uh, case where we have the tone the bass tone, which is overlapping perfectly, as you can see, almost perfectly, close enough. All the way, maybe we can make this overlap a little bit better, actually. Yeah, we'll be exporting this again in, in, a, in a while. So what actually is the problem is this crossfade is not flat. Uh, so if I right click and select Linear, and the comment there is for a highly correlated material. Now this crossfade is going to be perfectly straight. Let me export this again, and you're gonna see the difference that it makes. And you can see there is no clipping whatsoever right now. We are peaking at 0 0.1 decibels full, below full scale, and the true peak is also at zero, negative 0 0.1. So this is perfectly fine. All right, now, just to have fun, I'm going to put this file to O to LMMS, copy, paste, but first I'm going to turn it down because it's loud. Awesome. Let's take a closer look. Yep, there's our tiny fades in action and our manually found zero crossing. Fantastic. I'm going to close this. Okay. The last, last, last thing we need to do is loop our little 07, which is here. And again, same as with Audacity, this is going to be much quicker to do. So I'm going to hit Z 
And now we can zoom in and see these hits. Let's listen again. I'm going to turn it down because it's loud. Okay, let's control drag to copy. And I'm going to just move it so it's transparent. I'm going to disable snap. Actually, I don't have to disable snap. All I need to do is just hold alt and snap is going to be temporarily disabled. Let's zoom right in. Okay, it's right here. And we need to find our spot. So this is gonna be the spot. Okay, so to save the spot, because I need to select the second hit. So I'm gonna move my playhead in here and hit the enter on my numeric keypad. And this is uh, creating a marker, which I can use to cut things later. Okay, I'm gonna delete this because it's a helper. And now this shows me where the next hit would take place. And I'm going to move my cur mouse cursor. You can see that the blue vertical line snaps to this marker. I'm gonna hit S to split, which separates my tail. I'm gonna move it forward. And you can see in Ardor, we don't need to have a second track for this. I'm gonna show you why. And we need to also do a split in here. I'm gonna shift right click and I'm gonna disable the default crossfade. And this is our tail. I'm gonna shorten it because we don't need it to be so long. I'm gonna make it give, it, give it a fade out. And now the cool trick. If you right click, not on the fade, on the region, select its name, go to gain there's an option ta called opaque. If I disable that, this region becomes transparent. And what that means, it's not going to replace audio that was underneath it. It's going to be added on top of it. So let's hear this. Do you know where is this going? If I do Alt D now, now let's play for the transition. It's looping seamlessly. Let me delete that. Let's hold control, drag on the range markers. I'm gonna shift right click to delete this marker. We don't need it anymore. Type 07, hit Alt E, select 07. And you know, just for, just for the heck of it, I am going to show you how cool is the fact that we can you know what, let's select and fit all the tracks uh, in here. We can now easily normalize this stuff. So I'm going to Alt-3, normalize, Alt-3, normalize. This is our vocal, let's normalize it also. Let's normalize this one and this street as well. Oh, actually, I should not normalize this one. So we can Control right click and open up and we can have the region gain. It's 20.3 decibels, let's go 20. Okay, I'm gonna now, if you double click also, it opens the same dialog, you can type 20 and now it's going to be the same volume. Oh, there's another one, 20. Cool, this is normalized and this, this is normalized by, by nature. Okay, let's now go to the mixer view and I'm gonna shift click on all the faders. And also remove these things. Yep, all the faders are reset. Let's go to edit and I'm going to go Alt E to open the export dialog time span. I'm gonna just select all of them and hit export. And this will overwrite our files. So we are now exporting new and normalized sound effects with perfect looping all at once. Ardor is going to do all of this for us with a single click. No need to do this manually. You can just sit back and relax and we'll have our awesome files. And we have a nice little export summary. So this is our typing on the keyboard. This is our insides of a fridge. This is our voice loop. So there you have it. 
looping sounds seamlessly in Audacity and Ardor. Oh, uh, some part of this didn't, did not record, actually. I don't know how long. All right, let's cut it here. I think now you know all there is to know about seamlessly looping sound effects, both in Audacity and Ardor. I hope you can now make a decision which tool is better for which job. Um, certainly, the lack of a spectrogram is uh, giving Audacity. Certainly, because Audacity have a spectrogram view, while Ardor doesn't, that's giving Audacity a little upper hand. But except for this one thing, everything else, in my opinion, is done faster, better, and more conveniently in Ardor. So, yeah, if you would like to learn Ardor, I have a playlist with... Mm, here is the playlist. With many, many um, videos that can teach you Ardor, starting from the very basics, going through some more advanced stuff. Um, yeah, so if you want to learn Ardor, check out this playlist right there, and I will see you in there. Yep, that's it. That's all for I have for today. If you would like some assistance, uh, if you need, have some questions, you need some help uh, with... Ardor or other free and open source programs for music and audio production. Maybe you're running, running Linux and you have problems with sound, especially making sounds. Check out my community chat at chat.anfa.xyz. You will find there a lot of awesome people who are like you, making noises on Linux or with free and open source software on our operating systems. And it's always easier to solve problems together. Thanks for watching. I would also like to thank all the fine people who are making this show possible by donating money. Uh, if you would like to support this show as well, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. And now go and loop some sound effects. Oh wow, that was... Uh... I thought that's gonna be like half an hour video. Half an hour tops. And it's like uh, almost two, uh, one and a half hour. Quite a lot. <laughs>